This is Class Chats, brief video interviews featuring 10 questions that focus on the experience and work of students affiliated with the Center for Latin American Studies at the University of Chicago. I'm your host, Natalie Arsenault, Associate Director of Class. Hey everyone, my name's uh, Pedro Loreste. I'm a fifth year student in uh, Cinema and Media Studies, uh, specializing in like the transnational cinemas of the Hispanic Caribbean. I guess Latin American studies for me was a bit of a, a late development in my academic career because originally I was attracted to film because I come from literature. Uh, in Puerto Rico, uh, film studies isn't like its own standalone discipline. Uh, so once I started taking more advanced classes in English literature, I realized that some professors would let me um, sort of write about film. And I thought like, this is neat. Um, so when I applied to grad school, I made sure to apply to the film studies programs. Uh, the thing is, once I got there, I realized that there was like complete lack of Latin American film studies in the curriculum or not complete, but pretty much on the one hand, I had this, um, uh, this outside pressure of people telling me like, oh, so you're studying Latin American uh, cinema now. Isn't that you doing me search? And, um, and I, I actually like took that to heart. I don't know what me search even means because uh, like uh, studying Puerto Rican cinema or Cuban cinema or cinema of the Caribbean in general isn't like, that's not something deeply personal, especially as, as a Cuban uh, person of Cuban descent who has never been to Cuba. Um, so really, I just sort of uh, like embraced the confusion of, of that uh, accusation that I was doing me search and sort of started following the thread wherever it led me. My very course at the University of Chicago uh, with LAX, uh, cross-listed with LAX, has been Salome uh, Skaversky's The Afterlives of New Latin American Cinema. Because I always found, I mean, I uh, knew Latin American cinema is all, almost always taught in, the, in a very like structured way. It's um, like there's a proto cinematic sort of like borrowing from European uh, cinema styles of the 1950s. And then it becomes more militant toward the 60s and 70s. And then it just fades away. But the way that she uh, conceptualized a class by calling it the afterlives of new Latin American cinema is to sort of make the argument that these this movement, or at least this uh, this poetics didn't just disappear. You know, it's it's still going strong, even though uh, new film technologies and, and and new film styles and the inclusion of women and black uh, artists and filmmakers um, have sort of like added uh, new layers and new priorities uh, to Latin American cinema. Yeah. So one of the books that I uh, just recently um, uh, encountered and started um, sort of influencing the direction of like my thought and my research has been Edward Glissant's Poetics of Relation uh, and to a lesser extent Caribbean discourse as well, um, seeing as how um, the Caribbean is usually understood through an ethnographic and sort of anthropological lens um, and Glissant is sort of uh, applying like these grand um, um, like usually what's called like grand theory uh, or in conversation with grand theories uh, emerging from uh, Europe and the Americas, um, but it's all autochthonous to the Caribbean, specific to the context of the Caribbean. So reading um, uh, Poetics of Relation by Glissant sort of taught me that, um, you know, these theorizations are more of a, like an impulse of like, you know, of the intelligentsia or like the intellectual class, but really like, the process of misunderstanding yourself and your own culture and your own uh, place of origin, that's part of sort of the experience, especially in the Caribbean where you have like a, a mishmash of all sorts of like culture and ethnicities, languages. So um, I think he calls it opacity. So the, the, the Caribbean is this sort of opacity. And I think to, to understand, you, don't, you need to resist the impulse to fully grasp fully understand the region and its peoples. The thing is like, you can sort of like mellow in your, in your misunderstanding. Uh, and that's part of what makes uh, the Caribbean an exception, I guess. Um, 
first things first is like, I came here and I already knew that I was a Latin Americanist, but I, I spent at least the first two years of my program trying to find like an institutional home class provided me like a scaffolding that I never thought I needed. I started realizing that I needed like a firmer background in like Caribbean theory uh, or, or anthropo uh, anthropological sort of like methodologies, uh, Latin American history. And working at class uh, really uh, helped me like recenter my, my priorities. So, so they lie less with like film as, as, a, as a sort of academic field uh, and more with uh, Latin America and the Caribbean as a politics. So my very first uh, project in Latin American studies was a reception study of the Godfather films in Cuba. Um, and I realized that I could marry sort of like my, my interest in, in, in American film or American genre or American like convention of, of filmmaking with, um, uh, with Latin American studies through reception studies, through how these American products are consumed uh, or responded to by Latin American subjects. Uh, but I wanted to do the same thing uh, uh, or have the same approach to the study of Puerto Rican film for my dissertation, because Puerto Rico is like this sort of stateless nation in between Latin America and the US. Nobody really knows what it is. Uh, I think more young people are now willing to admit that it's a colony and I count myself among those. Um, so I wanted to know like, how does the concept of a national cinema actually evolve in you know, a modern colonial state? Um, and that meant expanding my uh, definition for what a national cinema is to include sort of like Puerto Rican cultural production in the diaspora, whether in, in elsewhere in Latin America, in New York City or in Europe, uh, but to also include the way that um, American films or, or films from elsewhere in the world have been received and sort of like reappropriated in Puerto Rican culture. Um, and, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. So right now, the tentative title for my dissertation is um, um, Free Associated Medium, the um, Puerto Rican Cinema in the American Century. Um, so I'm thinking of, I'm thinking through the lens of Puerto Rico's official uh, political status, which is uh, the status of free association or commonwealth, or as has become known uh, most recently as a colony. Um, but I'm also trying to apply like that theory to uh, the modes and genres of filmmaking in Puerto Rico uh, historically. Uh, what happened uh, in the middle of my uh, coursework here is that the oldest ever um, um, feature film uh, in Puerto Rico was found in an archive in 2017. It's called Romance Tropical, directed by Juan Emilio Villier. Um, uh, so that sort of changed my priorities because I'm like, okay, so here's this 1934 film, the, the second ever uh, sound film in Spanish. Uh, and it was thought lost for, for over 80 years. And all of a sudden, some archivist at UCLA finds it. Um, and, you know, people were celebrating it. There was like a big premiere planned and everything. And then all of a sudden, in 2017, Hurricane Maria happens. And of course, um, well, Romance Tropical sort of like sits on the back burner now. Uh, because there's like uh, other things happening in Puerto Rico, uh, particularly the, the archives that were meant to house this film uh, suffered some damage. Uh, the, the exhibition venues also uh, suffered some damage. The, the entity in Puerto Rico that organizes like these, these cultural events, uh, uh, they, they were the subject of uh, budget cuts and things like that. So there were a lot of like bureaucratic and infrastructural uh, problems uh, that affected the film's repatriation. So at that time I was like, you know, I really wanna study Cuba, I have this good project going, but it seems like what's happening in Puerto Rico is, is more urgent with this new film that was found and all the, uh, all the obstacles that was placed in, in the way of its repatriation. 
uh, some natural, most manufactured. Uh, <laughs> um, I sort of felt the the need to attend to it, to sort of uh, put it out there so people know what's happening and how, uh, you know, our current uh, uh, history of like um, non-sovereignty uh, and, and, and not having like this political autonomy is also affecting like uh, the cultural sector. It's also affecting like our, uh, our, our heritage. And that's how I settled on the issue of Puerto Rican cinema as like the project for me to work on at least uh, for the next couple of years. For me, the way I know I've, I've alluded to uh, sort of connections between Puerto Rican cinema and, and, and international cinema, uh, for me, the way is to like write, I want to write Puerto Ricans into the, the, the established histories of like film movements and styles and sort of like manifestos. Um, so these global histories where uh, very often like Puerto Ricans or Caribbean people in general uh, have been sort of excluded. Um, it's not difficult to find uh, the, the agency or the traces of, of, of Puerto Ricans or people from the Caribbean uh, in any aspect of cultural production. So there is, there is like this role in Puerto Rican, uh, for Puerto Rican filmmakers uh, uh, internationally that just hasn't been uh, studied yet. So for the for the chapter that I'm working on this film, uh, Romance Tropical, I found like a very popular book about Puerto Rican radical history. It's a popular press book, not academic. It's called War Against All Puerto Ricans by Nelson Tenis. Uh, at one point he claims that the uh, director confided in him that the, um, the inspiration from Romance Tropical, unironically, came from Lenny Riefensahl's Triumph of the Will, that he wanted to make a film that sort of like spurred these nationalist uh, uh, emotions in people in the style of like Lenny Riefenstahl. So he, uh, yeah, so he basically claimed that uh, our, <laughs> the, the director of our first feature length film was inspired by Nazi propaganda. The first trip I'm gonna take as soon as the pandemic allows is gonna be to Oigin, uh, Cuba, because uh, I promised my family that I was gonna visit them. They've been like uh, trying to get me to visit them for uh, almost 15 years now. So uh, I, I gotta, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go there to visit. I'm also gonna do a little bit of research, but really the trip has been long overdue. These next couple of trips uh, after the pandemic, uh, I think not a lot of it is gonna to be tourism. It's sort of like pleasure. It's gonna be mostly, if it's not research, it's gonna be like seeing the people that I, I've really been meaning to see for, for a long time. The University of Chicago has a long-standing commitment to intolerance of multiple forms of free expression. Opinions expressed by guests on class chats do not reflect the official position of the university or any of its constituent departments or organizations. Thanks for watching.